you want to be successful in music, so it has to resonate with people. But there's a huge portion of the industry that's already serving the casual consumer. And I remember sitting with the band, listening to music and saying things like, Oh man, did you hear that drum fill? Or how the guitar tone in Colourful Life's Middle Eight, for example, would just give me goosebumps at the time. And that's why I've got a bit of a new mission and it's making a variant of pop music that although can be enjoyed by those people, it isn't necessarily produced for the casual listener. And I got lost in that world, but there's a liberating feeling that comes with making something and working hard to retain its purest form and making it feel like a record, but not something that's dynamics have been squashed for, say, streaming. It's just there for those that are just a bit closer to it. When I was young, I probably made the truest music that I've ever made. We were fresh from school, figuring stuff out, putting ourselves into lyric-worthy situations, which was detrimental for those around you, but amazing for music. And at the time, indie music was the mainstream. And so that was what I consumed, and that's what I made, and I've grown away from it. But I should have kept hold of the things that made indie indie, which is the independence, free from control. And this is the closest I've ever been to that. I've been on the other extreme as well, and having no control. And that definitely isn't for me. It's not to say you have to make something totally avant-garde and unusual, not to say you shouldn't, but not to say you have to, and I think I'll always make love songs. Love and music, at the end of it all, at my funeral, they won't be saying, remember that time we worked at Bank Holiday, or remember how we once drank too much and mistook a hotel window board for a toilet, true story that, but it's a story for another time. It'll all just be love and music at the end of it all. When you're thrusting your opinions about all willy-nilly, whether through music or through video, you, you get a lot of people sharing their thoughts on you, which is part and parcel of it. And I don't mind that, but my musical values get questioned a lot. But I still maintain that's when you have to just double down and realise that you're probably onto something if those people are saying those things. I think putting the time into a format like Eurorack rewards you by becoming a co-writer in the studio. And the term generative, to me, usually meant relying on maths or math, you're American, to bail me out when I wasn't feeling very creative. But over time, though, it's become something that I can feed some theory and it just seasons it, making it more organic. And it has a feel to it that I can't make. I just have to, I suppose, search for it in the patch, as pretentious as that sounds. Hey, if this is doing bits for you, by the way, don't forget to uh, maybe subscribe. I'm just trying to make Modular a little less scary and a little more sexy. I'm mixing really tight, rigid stuff with the free-flowing pads. The modulation makes them ebb and flow totally off the grid. And that might not be for everyone, but like I say, this isn't intended for everybody. It's not made for the casual listener. You're either in it or you're not. A bit like Monty Python or Mighty Boosh. You either get it or you don't. You just need to find a way to be proud of the tracks you're making, but they do have to positively impact someone. That's the rule. Join the Patreon for one-to-one -one video chats, help with your case on music, Patreon meets digital goodies and more.